I have faith that the Constitution will be saved as prophesied by Joseph Smith. But it will not be saved in Washington. One of our brethren some years ago spoke of the payment of tithing as fire insurance. Nonetheless, the word of the Lord is clear that those who do not keep the commandments and observe the laws of God shall be burned at the time of his coming. For that shall be a day of judgment, a day of sifting, a day of separating the good from the evil. I would venture a personal opinion that no event has occurred in all the history of the earth as dreadful as will be the day of the second coming as fraught with the destructive forces of nature, as consequential for the nations of the earth, as terrible for the wicked, and as wonderful for the righteous. Try have his wing gets all. All right, church news time. I still have to make the uh, first half of the other video that I did. Going over an ex foe Nevermo who thinks he knows it all because he was miseducated by Danites. Or through Danites. Through other people who got information wrong. And there's uh, another a person who is following me regularly who uh, is misinformed as a member of such a family who believes that a certain uh, woman of the list of Joseph Smith's wives is his third great grandmother or something like that. Uh, Joseph Smith's fourth wife, I think he said. No, she wasn't. She lied. You too are a branch off of those who lied about Joseph Smith. Everybody who came to this valley are liars for Jesus, i.e. Brigham Young. You are wrong. Desdemona Fulmer, third great grand or aunt, is said to have been sealed to Joseph Smith in 1843. No, we all know in the Fulmer family, uh-uh. It was after Joseph died, 1846. It's in their own records that they made in 1846. And so, no. It's a lie. The church lied to you. The church went public and confessed that Desdemona Fulmer and others were sealed to Joseph while he was alive. We know as a family that's a blatant, outright lie. So please do not come to my channel. Please do not comment thinking you know better. You don't. You were lied to. You didn't fact check them. You don't know how to do research properly. When you're getting your information from some author who wrote a book, you've been lied to. That's not primary source documentation. The actual book <laughs> that they made is the primary source documentation. Willard Richards. Joseph Smith didn't marry any little girls. Willard did in 1846. They wrote it in the book. They made the ceilings official. Those are illegal. You can't have them violation of bigamy laws in the United States, but there the church still has the evidence of crime. <sighs> ex fo never mows. Come on, guys. We need better from you. You left the church because you know it's not true, so don't trust them for anything. They lie, and there are malicious in their lies. Are you not watching R-rated movies still? Did the church scare you from R-rated movies? <sighs> God. So, 
Well, here it is. As I told you, they do it. They're not going to rededicate the temple and the historical buildings until the 27th of April, I believe they said. But it's the open house time, right before conference. And then they're going to brag about it in conference, how they screwed over the community of Christ with just two mites. <laughs> when the community of Christ could have screwed over the church for multi-hundreds of billions and the church still would have said, two mites, <laughs> petty cash, petty change. <sighs> Dear God, that's why the church keeps secrets. And so, yeah, they they're, have the church service missionary, well, actually for... Um, open houses they get the local stake members to be a part of this and so the stake the church would have gone through the stake presidency to have probably some prep meeting before the open house they do something similar for temple open houses uh, where they gotta instruct the tour guides as to what to say and and they're where they gotta go and do and blah 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 and so they're gonna bring up section 110 and say that Jesus not Jehovah appeared and they're gonna lie about Moses's keys but uh, I and it's likely they may bring up some of the Mormon myths that came from the Danites yeah, it was the Danites who said that the Kirtland Temple was on fire. <laughs> Singing the Spirit of God like a fire is burning. Those were Danites in their journals here in this valley. That's who wrote about them and it became Mormon myths. What they were saying was the threat to the United States of America in the latter days and apparently Ray Montgomery is who they're talking about to burn the Salt Lake Temple down yeah can you believe that they got all the billions of dollars from Putin to burn it down because it has the inverted pentagram on it and they need to cover up and hide the doctrine of Lucifer <clears throat> I don't know I mean all they could have done is just chiseled it off and then flattened it out and had no symbol on it whatsoever solve the controversy or redo it to have it pointing up <laughs> Well, who knows what they're we've yeah, they've got planned but but yeah they they are going to lie about church history I told you they were and they sure enough the little person little girl that was doing the, the video or the church news article about the revised history of church in Kirtland <laughs> already had so many errors in it and so yeah the church has already got it all planned out to uh, retell history rewrite history they've already done it and so yeah now I'm I, I don't think they're gonna put a baptismal font in here <laughs> I think it'll just be a tour place rather than a functioning temple. <laughs> Dear God. And so, yeah, it'll just be for tourism purposes only. So that the church service missionaries that will eventually be assigned and most likely have already been assigned because uh, it's next month. So yeah, they would have had to have been called by now to go there and are very likely in the MTC already being instructed on what to say and how to say it. 
<coughs> so, and then uh, how two mission companions discovered they were cousins. And this is a bit deceptive. Because Mormons don't know the process of how the church does it. It's not what I clicked on. See, when I applied for my mission, and I never did get to the second video, which is applying for the mission. Anyway, that's buried down in the playlist so I keep forgetting and never gotten to it but uh, I was required to submit a four or six generation pedigree chart to the President Benson at the time when I went and uh, I'm sure that, that tradition continued, maybe. I don't know. The younger generation don't really watch my channel. <clears throat> and so I don't know if they've still continued that practice of requiring the submission of the pedigree chart. But on the pedigree chart, it would show who's been a cousin of mine to which was Benson at the time. It's now been transferred to uh, at least two apostles to work on and so I, that's the last I heard about that and so the first presidency don't deal with missionary assignments anymore so the revelation is even less <laughs> it's not Jesus who <laughs> sent you there but that's what they want you to believe, that the call came from Jesus to go where you are sent to. It has nothing to do, therefore, with missionaries are coming home, we need some more to fill in, you are going, hey, we'll put you there. <laughs> oh, you're an American? Okay, we'll send you to Colorado. <laughs> Screw you going abroad. <laughs> and went to New York, New York. So I was like, oh, thank God. Because there was a lot of peer pressure. <laughs> if you go stateside, <laughs> you're a loser. <laughs> and, uh, and so these... Uh, two little girls if it's still practice would have sent in their pedigree chart which they would have seen oh look they're both going on missions oh look they're related let's send them to the same mission and then the mission president can have them assigned to be companions and then they can think that it's Jesus that miraculously put them together and then they can tell a story of how two mission companions discovered they were cousins Ta-da! and so then it becomes a faith promoting story on the church news and the church is true and Jesus did it <laughs> They're gone. The church knows very detailed information about everybody. Even when you leave the church and demand that your records be removed. They don't remove them. You just get put into the apostate file. <clears throat> and so, yeah, if you're a good girl and you give your pedigree chart and you have a cousin who's a apostate, anti-Mormon, anti-Christ, Korah, horror. they will know 
They will know that you're of the family of apostates and you'll go to Colorado. <laughs> Instead of Spain, where all the hot chicks go. So, yeah. Apparently, Roots Tech happened already. Hmm. Would have thought that would have been in February. That's when I was uh, asked to participate as a book signer. Long story. It happened on a fulfillment of prophecy in Revelation chapter 12, near the end, about the flooding. Yep. Lucifer was also doing it that same time, too. Hmm. Amazing how the scripture prophecies of the Jews are all true. You just gotta remove the Christian goggles. Can't see it. Can't see it. <laughs> and getting back onto the subject of, I think, this morning's video. Or uh, the video where I talked about telling the truth to your kids about Christmas and the Easter Beagle. <laughs> Not the Easter Bunny. The Easter Honey Bunny, maybe, but not the Easter Bunny. And so, yeah, same thing with religion. When you lie to your kids that Jesus is real, you're denying your own religious origins, first and foremost, they're God. Do you deny that Constantine had the first creed of Christianity? that formed Christianity, that created Jesus as not real, Homuzion, and named him Jesus instead of the prophesied name of Emmanuel. You just replace him? Replace the Jews? Call it Christian now? Or maybe you're Islamic, who likewise did the same thing replaced both Christians and Jews and now Jesus is Islamic and is going to come back in the latter days to murder everybody else. Christian Jesus is coming to murder Islam, the Jews and Mormons and then the Mormon Jesus is going to murder everybody but the Mormons. Except for Ray says Mormons are going to die to sacrifice themselves so that the church can get their kingdom back. So yeah, you've got to teach your kids the truth. If you start young, you can easily brainwash a kid. Cult groups love little children. Because they willingly drink Kool-Aid. That's why it's so sad and disgusting learning that the church was a fraud because I've been through the whole process as a kid. And even as a kid, I knew there was something wrong. Because I was mocking. <laughs> I was asking difficult questions about scriptures we were going over. You know, like, when I turned 18, that's when I get told about Joseph Smith and the first vision. And I'm being told that no man can see the face of God and live unless you have the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is only given to you at baptism. So how did Joseph Smith do it? I'm a kid, and I'm smart enough to figure it out that something's going on. And so, yeah, music. Primary songs taught me to make up my own words for music. <laughs> because I didn't know about worldly music until my... Uh, uh, dad gave me his old uh, clock radio 
uh, after their anniversary when he bought himself a new clock radio for his anniversary. And he had it tuned to the Dodger station on the AM dial because he knew I loved the Dodgers even though the only baseball games he would take me to were the Angels games. <laughs> had to go with my cousins to go to a Dodger game. <laughs> but nonetheless, nonetheless, yeah, I'm well aware of the guy running for government office, too. But, uh, <clears throat> and the scandal of gambling. I don't know, Pete Rose has risen from the grave. Is he still alive? Or did Pete Rose finally die? Nope, he's 82 years old. Living in Cincinnati, or born in Cincinnati. It's unclear where he's living now. Hmm. Well, good old Pete Rose. Miss Charlie Hustle. Is he Charlie Hustle? Is that what he was called? Charlie Hustle, sure enough. Also known by his nickname, Charlie Hustle. Yeah, Mr. October, Reggie Smith. Hell yeah. Oh, he was a beauty to watch during the playoffs. Yep, yep, yep. Reggie Smith or Reggie Jackson? Reggie Jackson, isn't it? Yeah, Jackson. Joseph Smith on the brain. <clears throat> and so, yeah, it's important to tell the truth to your kids. Jesus does not exist. He was created by Constantine, specifically designed to trick everybody. And those primary children's songs are false doctrine and just outright false. If by chance you meet a frown, do not let it stay. Quickly turn it upside down and frown that smile away. See how much fun I had? <laughs> and so, yeah, that's awful. With all the problems that kids go through, with divorced parents, parents who die, you know, Catherine, Princess Catherine, now has cancer. She has kids. That's not something you want to tell those kids to quit frowning and being sad and smile. Plus, there's all the abuse by older pervs who tell little girls to smile because they'll look prettier. And so even the scriptures tell you to mourn with those who mourn. Comfort those in need of comfort. It is a doctrinal abomination to tell little kids, to teach little kids that it is never good to frown. There are always appropriate times to frown. And this is just an outright lie, not just with Jesus. And so then you have the contradicting hymns. I believe in Christ. I know that my Redeemer lives. The Book of Mormon teaches me that once I know, I no longer have faith, which is belief. Because I know. I've produced the results. I now have a physical witness. Because I know. And since it's about Jesus, nobody can ever know because he's not real. And so thus the creation of a spiritual witness, which is not real, but it makes you feel good. You're not frowning. 
And so, yeah, this Christian creation has been the biggest abomination the world has ever known. Over four billion people currently have been fooled into this con. And the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are the only ones using it as a criminal protection racket. You must pay up and pay Jesus back for his atonement. This is ransom money and you have to pay. And not only for your salvation from the day of burning, but you have to pay for your dead ancestors. to save their lives. This is human trafficking extortion. Where Asians typically have to come up with the money to come to America and then have to pay by working in America to get their family to come over. Or even worse, they get a loan to come to America and have to work it off and then work off some more to get their family over. And nobody makes the connection. Dear God. And the news doesn't want to cover it when a massage parlor gets blown up by a Catholic who was feeling guilty about masturbating there. <sighs> God. Even in Utah, we have massage parlors. Don't try to tell me that they don't practice happy endings. They are from Asia. They are forced to do what they do. I'm having a difficult time believing that any of them willingly went into the massage parlor business because that was the only job that they knew how to do. Dear God. Alright. Yep. Am I even going to get that other video up? <laughs> I'm already at 30 minutes on this one. And there's scattering kindness. Scattered sunshine all on the way. Zippy cookies. Leaves a trail of chocolatey goodness wherever he goes. I need to watch that movie again. <laughs> and teaches the value of the importance of telling the truth. Oh dear God. Nothing to lose. Martin Lawrence and somebody else. What the hot wife. But no, you don't want to play those kinds of games with your wife. Because you're not sure if she's pulling a Freudian on you. Tim Robbins, Nick Beam. <laughs> Where are you? Are you kidding me? They put you down at the bottom? You're the headliner, dude. What's up? Also hilarious, and the other one that I need to watch about uh, being a security guard. Is it national security? Is that what it's called? And of course, the classic Bad Boys. Bad Boys 2. Oh man, he just owned the scene. <laughs> Blue 
Streak. I think it's Blue Streak. Black Knight was also good, too. National Security. Nope, 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 nope. National Security. Yep, yep, there was the white guy. <laughs> Cop. They are not buddies. <laughs> Steve's on. <laughs> so one of those will be my bedtime movie tonight. <clears throat> Nothing to lose. And national security. Great. They're on the same drive. <laughs> if I hurry, maybe I can watch both and go to bed early. Oh, dear God. Alright, so Quentin L. Cook today. Dear God. So again, it's important to tell the truth. Jesus does not exist. None of these prophets will tell you the truth. They lie to you. You believe they actually see Jesus and therefore are telling you the truth. They've never seen him. They've confessed they've never seen him. The testimony of the living Christ? Yep, they lied. They say they don't see him. <clears throat> but when they say we testify that he lives, they lie. In order to testify that you know Jesus lives, you have to have seen him in the flesh, face to face, as a man seeth another man. And the church lies. They didn't do it. Joseph Smith was in the learning of the Jews. His visionary accounts were just that, visionary accounts. They weren't a personal appearance. That's why Joseph Smith didn't burn to ash. But that's the whole Danite thing, is burning. The presence of Jesus is a burning. The Holy Ghost is the baptism of fire. The Spirit of God, like a fire, is burning. The Kirtland Temple burned. The Nauvoo Temple actually was burned. <laughs> this is all their pattern. The KKK, burning crosses. The Confederates with the inverted pentagram on the blood cross. All from the same origin source. That's why Dixie is in Utah, in the South. They're all part of the same gang. Criminal organization all. They are the ones that are the threat to this nation. And they are winning, and they will destroy America this election. And so, last supper, Quentin, did you not get informed of my videos that I did using the last supper video that was redone, upgraded with Kiernan, Kieran? <laughs> Quentin? <laughs> my dad threatened my mother to name me Travis by threatening to have her choose either Vincent or Quentin as my other name options. My mom didn't like those names, Quentin. And so thus, my dad knew that, knew that and thus I was named Travis for Texas, the Alamo. Wait a minute, he died in the Alamo, didn't he? <laughs> that was a good movie, though, by the way. Very good movie. I, I'm sure it has a lot of historical accuracies, even though the actors were, you know, playing their part, and there's probably some Hollywood liberties taken, script writing liberties, but nonetheless, very excellent movie. <clears throat> anyway, the Savior's charge to his disciples 
to love one another and let them steal from you and burn you and rape your wife and your little girls. And the dramatic and powerful way he taught this principle at the Last Supper. What principle did he teach at the Last Supper? One of you is going to betray me and have me murdered. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Do you not know how to read, Quentin? <sighs> is one of the most poignant and beautiful episodes of the last days. That's what it's referring to by the Jewish author. The last days, the last supper, the wedding supper feast of the Lamb at the Zion Temple. Revelation 19, Doctrine and Covenants 58. <sighs> so, to extend the video out even longer, I need to go over Joseph Smith's 19 July 1840. Because nobody's going to go to the Joseph Smith papers, are ya? This is where Joseph Smith actually said a comment that every Danite said, hang by a thread. Joseph Smith instead said, brink of ruin. There it is. Bring you over here. <clears throat> and so Brigham Young wanted nothing to do with this because of the Last Supper part. Uh, Joseph Smith also says that the uh, the last days temple is not in Missouri. He says many of you think it's in Missouri. It's not in Missouri. That was just another location for another temple, you know, like Nauvoo. Dear God, you got all these people who believe the Danites that it's the latter day temple, and thus Joseph Smith was foiled by not getting it built. Dear God. Okay, where's the enemy? There we are. Then the enemy shall come as a thief in the night. And so at the very end of the paragraph. But before this. And as Benson, I did the clip in the previous video. The Constitution will be saved as Joseph Smith prophesied. Here's the prophecy, right here. 19 July 1840. This is what Benson is talking about. But Benson said Joseph will be wrong. That it will not be saved in Washington. The Constitution from the very verge of destruction. And the brink of ruin. Where's the brink of ruin? And when the Constitution is on the brink of ruin, this people will be the staff upon which the nation shall lean. And so I guess Joseph Smith is a false prophet after all, because this church helped destroy the Constitution. Religious freedom, my ass. So, back to, but, before this, the time will be when they who are now my friends, Brigham Young and his Danites are in the audience. Brigham Young's now the president of the Twelve, since October. 1838, he's being called the president. <sighs> then shall the Lord, oh wait, that's not, okay. Uh, shall become my enemies and shall seek to take my life. He's prophesying here in case you didn't know. And this prophecy came to pass. Because Brigham Young murdered him. Who was Willard, and Willard Richards and John Taylor? Which quorum were they in? 
I had that one guy think that I was wrong because he learned that Willard Richards' testimony is a lie. So I'm wrong. I need to wake up. <laughs> I do the video every year for his death day. I, that was what started off my church history research. It was in 2017. It was the Doctrine and Covenants year in, in uh, Sunday school. And uh, my neighbor <coughs> had uh, uh, was talking with me before class uh, as the lesson for that was still a, a week or two away. And he was studying on it already. And he asked me, did you know that Joseph Smith had a pistol? I went, yeah, my third great grandfather, John Solomon Fulmer, gave him his pistol. Did you know he had two? Oh, no, I, I didn't know he had two. And so I went home and I went and researched and studied to find out about the second pistol. My third great grandfather gave him a single shot was Wheelock, who was John Taylor's friend, but didn't realize that John Taylor was in on the hit job, gave Joseph a six-shooter. So Willard Richards then claimed that he had to go get wine for the sacrament. He got a six-shooter himself. Willard Richards stood in the corner, out of the way of the firing. But they never made it up the stairs. Because Joseph Smith was at the top of the stairs with the six-shooter, shot three of them. They ran back out, had to tend to the wounds. Joseph saw that his brother Hiram had been shot, huh, with the single shot of my third great-grandfather, John Solomon Fulmer. Right up the jaw. John Taylor was standing over the body. Joseph Smith shot the three remaining balls in John Taylor. One of them hit him in the pocket watch. We know that he was hit four times. Uh, where'd that fourth one come from, Willard Richards? <laughs> Stand still, we gotta make it look good. Like <laughs> One of the ones with the rifles, not the pistols. They didn't have forensic science back then. Forensic science was a 19th or 20th century uh, evolvement. I learned that the other day when I was checking on the origin of forensics. In the 1800s, and back in those days, no, there was nothing on forensic science. And so the Johnny Depp movie, uh, Sleepy Hollow, where he's trying to do forensics, with all the wacky tools and stuff. Yeah, that's him being a, a revolutionary in the field. And, uh, and so then, yeah, Willard Richards came behind Joseph Smith as he was mourning over his brother Hiram. Come on, Joseph, if I chance you meet a frown, do not let it stay. Boom, shot him in the back took his body, dumped it out the window where everybody else then got their rifles and popped them over and over again. And you had to load it and pack it down, fire. Load it, pack it down, fire. And they were very long. That's why they didn't bring them up the stairs with them. Too narrow. All this forensic evidence. And Oakes writes a book to cover it all up. And so, yeah, Willard Richards then came back over to Hiram, who only shot up in the jaw, and then, uh, boom, was right, no, here, right here in this portion, right in that area, and then blew the back out onto the floor. That was the blood stain in Carthage Jail, when you used to see the little plaque on the floor that said it was Joseph's blood. It was Hiram's. And so Campbell made sure to have it all erased so that nobody can find it ever again. 
a blood stain still remains if you know where to look. Anyway. Uh, now my enemies shall take, take my life. There are those now before me who will be more furiously, who will more furiously pursue me, more diligently seek my life, and be more bloodthirsty upon my track than ever were the Missouri mobbers, which were only defending themselves against the Danites. You say among yourselves, as did them of old time, Is it I? And is it I? Mark, chapter 14. The Last Supper. Joseph Smith is Messiah Ben Joseph, prophesied by the Jews to be murdered by the enemy. And here Joseph Smith knows it and says it. And it was done according to prophecy. <sighs> and so who is the twelve again? Brigham and his Danites. Prophecy fulfilled. Joseph Smith is a prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. And Mormons don't believe it. They can't. Ready? They won't tell you the truth.